Any feed-forward neural network with at least one hidden layer and a sufficient number of neurons can approximate any continuous function on a compact domain to an arbitrary degree of accuracy, given appropriate activation functions. This is one of the formulations of the so-called universal approximation theorem, and it's one of the most important reasons why machine learning is so successful. The idea is that we can describe most things by functions, or as Thomas Garrity puts it, functions describe the world. Everything is described by functions. The sound of my voice on your eardrum, function. The light that's kind of hitting your eyeballs right now, function. The entries you put in your random matrices, function. It's all function. I start most of my courses that way. And if a machine can learn any function, a machine can therefore learn anything. Let's simplify the theorem a bit to understand what it means. With some restrictions that are not really relevant in practice, we can also just say the following. A deep learning model can learn any function when using appropriate activation functions. By appropriate, we mean in particular that the activation functions must be non-linear. But that is actually not that big of a restriction. One could even argue that most functions are not linear anyway. Let's take, for example, the square function. Can we use it inside a model to approximate any function? The theorem says so. Or what about the sine function? Should work too. And if really any function works, can we, for example, take the height map of a Minecraft world? Hi and welcome to Premature Abstraction. In this video, we will experiment with activation functions and see if the universal approximation theorem actually holds. First, a small disclaimer. To get the most out of this video, you should at least know a bit about deep learning architectures and how a neural network learns but let's briefly get on the same page what we are talking about. Very broadly speaking, a convolutional neural network for recognizing images is built as follows. We have some amount of convolutional layers. After each of those, we put a pooling layer to downsample a bit, and then we run the result through an activation function. At the very end, we then have a final fully connected layer that does the classification and a softmax to transform the outputs into probabilities. All right. With that out of the way, let's have a look at activation functions. Over the years, very different activation functions were used. Starting in the 1950s, the Rosenblatt perceptron was using a simple step function. The motivation was to mimic a binary, on or off firing state for neurons. However, this approach comes with a lot of limitations. It has, for example, a derivative of zero everywhere and is therefore not suitable for gradient-based learning algorithms such as backpropagation. After that, the sigmoid and tanh functions became popular. Starting in the 1980s, they were chosen because of the rich mathematical framework they are part of, for example in logistic regression. Also, they are differentiable everywhere and therefore suitable for gradient learning. Tanh especially, because it is zero-centred, which helps convergence. There is one issue though, namely that the functions flatten out quite quickly for high or low values. This means that the gradient there is small, leading to slow training. Therefore, in the 2010s, the so-called ReLU was popularized. It was shown that this very simple function is already enough for training. And since its derivative is even simpler, it is very computationally efficient. But remember the theorem from the introduction. The only thing that keeps our model from breaking the universal approximation theorem is this kink here, which makes it non-linear. It should be safe to say that this function has been the most popular in the last years. There have been some adaptions which fit better to specific applications, but the ReLU is still taught and used frequently. Now let's bring that knowledge to the test. Our general setup is as follows. The model consists of three layers, each with pooling and an activation function. In the end, we will have our linear classifier and a softmax. As data, we take the CIFAR 10 dataset, which contains 60,000 coloured images over 10 different classes, such as airplanes or cats. It's considered a very easy to learn dataset, but this is more of a demonstration anyway. Now, instead of me mentioning all the details, you can pause the video here to take a look at them.
All right, let's do a first test run. We will choose the popular ReLU function for activations. And looking at the prediction accuracy during training, we can see that it is well able to learn. On the contrary, when the universal approximation theorem is correct, the network should not be able to learn anymore when we use a linear activation function instead. Let's choose this very simple one. We run the experiment again and um, huh, we get a similar result. Shouldn't it be a lot worse now? You can pause here if you want to think about the problem yourself. The issue are the pooling layers. By default, often max pooling is used and so did we. So why did this break our experiment? In max pooling, the largest value of the sliding window is taken as output. For each evaluation, this could be a different one of the four. So max pooling in itself is actually already a non-linear function. Instead, we could use average pooling, which in itself can be represented as a matrix multiplication. So it's a linear function. So if we replace max pooling with average pooling and run our experiments again, we can see that instantly the model is not able to learn anymore when using a linear function as activation function. Actually, you may think that the roughly 40% accuracy are not too bad for it not being able to learn. In the case where the model cannot learn at all, shouldn't it be more like random guessing? So 10% for 10 classes? Well, saying the model cannot learn at all is a bit of an exaggeration. It is still trying to fit a linear function to the training data as well as possible. But it just will never converge to the real function. Now you may wonder, most of the previously mentioned activation functions were all monotonic. But do others work too? For example, the square function? Indeed it does. What about periodic functions like the sine? Yes, it works too. Or a mixture of both? Absolutely no issue. It works even better than the ReLU in this case. You can see that the most important thing is the non-linearity. To really bring that point home, let's be a bit creative. Why don't we, for example, take the previous learning curve as the function graph for an activation function? That also works. Also, I found this Python package for reading Minecraft world data. We can do a cross section of the generated land and take the ground surface as another function. Now it gets a bit ridiculous and the performance is also not contesting the others anymore. But you can see that in principle, we can just take any function as long as it has some non-linearity. Let's compare all of them on a validation split of the data set that the model did not see during training. You can see that there are good reasons why the ReLU is used so often, especially when considering how efficient it is to compute. Our Minecraft function, however, can unfortunately not really compete. In any case, the most important thing is that the activation function is non-linear. This has been Premature Abstraction. Thank you for watching.